Hey guys, Henny and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to be talking about Mari versus Painter. This is a pretty interesting topic. A bunch of people have asked us about this in the comments and in general about I'm, I'm interested in texturing. Should I use Painter from Algorithmic or should I use Mari from uh, the Foundry? And they're both great. Yeah. I mean, get ready for the fanboys war in the in the comments for sure. Uh, but we're gonna be we're gonna try it and and stay as unbiased as possible, yeah. just because we want to look at the strengths and weaknesses of both of these software. And yeah, so we're gonna try it and and take a a more sort of like less dividing approach and see what is actually the good and the bad of both of them. Um, it's up to you guys to, uh, you know, start the, the war in the comments. Yeah, we definitely want to flame war in the <laughs> comments. We are not going to crown a winner here. We're going to just go over some of the, the differences. Yeah. I've used Mari for many years in production as a texture artist. That was that was my job, basically, at uh, MVFX. I, I was doing sculpting and texturing, so I have a lot of experience with Mari just in production. From Painter, that, that's something which is it's a more recent software, mm. but uh, it's something that I've really been getting into recently as well. So with that said, let's just get more into it. We, this is what Mari looks like. Mari has a bunch of buttons <laughs> and it has a bunch of icons and it's really a very elaborate software. If we switch to uh, Painter, we can see that it's a lot easier. Yeah, it's a lot calmer on the eyes. <laughs> yeah. This is one of the main differences people have when it comes to just from a user point of view between Mari versus Painter mm. is that Mari is very easy to get into. Yeah. Well, oh, sorry, Painter. Yeah, Painter. Painter is very easy to get into. Mari is not very easy to get into. So that, this is something I've experienced firsthand because I am not a texture artist and I, I've used Mari when I've needed to. Like, mostly it's been for some displacement stuff that I just need to make some quick titleables. And then I get messages being like, Henny, <laughs> how do I do that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I, like, from my point of view, I think Mari is a extremely cluttered and messy software. The UI is, I feel like it's hard to navigate, but there's just so much functionality in yeah. there. So once you start to, you know, get familiar with it, it's less of an issue because you have so much more. Uh, there's so much more control that just opens up to you. Whereas when I started getting into Painter, it was just, you know, go through a quick few quick tutorials and you have most of what you need, like, on board pretty quickly. Yeah, it's one of the issues in Mari is, well, it's, it's not an issue per se, it's just that they have so many features developed yeah. and they need to have them somewhere. Well, yeah. well, Painter is a lot less mature software in the way that just it doesn't have that many features yet, yeah. which they might run into the issue of complexity in the future. One of the main things between the two software, apart from just the visual interface from a user point of view, is that they were trying to solve very different issues. Mari was built basically in the fires of Weta, trying to... Uh, <laughs> the fires of Mordor. <laughs> fires of Mordor, trying to solve very a very specific technical issue, which was in VFX, you have to get so much data through the production. It's not so much about, can you do this? Can you paint the maps in a quick manner? It's more, we just need a lot of resolution on this monkey. Yeah. We need to get as close as possible to having the universe in his eye. Can you do it? <laughs> and in Mari, yes. <laughs> yes, you can. So they, that was the very specific issue they were trying to solve. Well, Painter is trying to solve a different issue, which is making texture painting easy and accessible. Yeah. Which means they are focusing on different markets, at least different, they're approaching it in a different way. And I, I think that's also, like the way I see it is that for Mari, it's it's very much tailored towards the effects. Very much and, so. And you know, maybe some high-end stuff for game cinematics as, as well. So that's, I would say that's a tinier market, just in terms of like how many people. Then you've got all the hobbyists and all the people that want to get into games, the people working in games, they're using Painter. Yeah. And it, because, well, I guess what we've talked about is just what do you need, like, from your tool? You don't need 100 UDIMs in a game because, well, it doesn't support it. No. You need that for VFX. So they just solve very different issues. So it's a specific issue here we can look at in, in the UDIM, in the UV uh, view here. We can see that we have each one of these is one texture map. This is one UDIM. We have separate videos on this on talking about UDIMs and UVs, if you want to check that out. But... Each one of these is now 4K, which is a lot of resolution. Yeah. Which means that for this character here, 
you can, for most commercials, this will probably be, more, be perfectly fine. For a film, you will probably need like four times the resolution with this. Mm -hmm. But it means you, on a character like this, you can probably go this close up to him and it would still mostly hold up in a frame. If you go to Painter, this is what we have to work with. We have one map, which currently is just set to 1K. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's 1 million pixels in each one of these items here has 16 million pixels. <laughs> so basically, we're talking about what we have in Painter currently is like this little area. Yeah. It, it, it's tiny. So the resolution you can get into in Mari is like in an absolute way is 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 higher. Like there is just no debate on, on that. Mari has just a lot better performance uh, or rather it can support <laughs> it can support a lot more data. Yeah. Performance is uh, kind of up to your hardware. <laughs> Performance is actually an issue with Mari because you can you can run Painter on a lot of different uh, setups. It, that's not a huge issue. Uh, my um, my my daily workstation is actually a laptop, and it runs Painter perfectly fine. While Mari, I actually have issues running Mari, at least if, if I'm talking about more than one item. So performance is a huge deal between them. That Mari can ha handle so much more data if you have a good graphics card. Yeah, and I mean, in a VFX production, you will. If, I don't know, they're like four or 5,000 pounds. Yeah, mine, <laughs> for Pacific Rim, mine was 5,500 pounds, <laughs> 24 gigs of RAM on the graphics card. Yeah, so that's um, that's a whole nother beast. Yeah. And you can see, like, so this this becomes an issue when we're talking about characters like this. That's one coherent mesh. There's no breakups in between. So there's no way to really hide your seams. Yeah. So... There are ways to, you know, hack around the lack of UDIM support in, in Painter, but then you do end up with the seams, yeah. and then you have to paint those out between different UDIMs, whereas that's not an issue in Mari, because you just have full UDIM support. So that's, you know, that's one strength of Mari that Painter doesn't have, but again, the architecture is completely different, and you need super powerful hardware to, to work with that. Yeah, basically what Morin's talking about here is if you need to paint across this seam, like this, what we selected here, this is one item, you can't really do that in Painter. Like this this stroke here, you actually couldn't do. No. Which is just between one item to another. Actually, what we're seeing here as well, this is another another difference between the two as well. If you, When you're painting in Mari, you're actually not painting on a mesh right now. You're painting on on like a glass pane basically, mm. which means you can now take this and you can now start to adjust the stroke or the image or whatever it is you have, which is really handy when you're projecting a lot of issues. Remember, Mari was built for VFX where you mostly use photographic reference. Yeah. You mostly take this and you really just project it down, hit the B key to bake it, while in Painter, you're actually painting on the mesh. You can see here that if you look at the cursor, that it actually goes around the surface this has a lot of advantages. This means that you can hand paint something in Painter a lot more, in a lot better way. Yeah, it's it's very hard to hand paint on a mesh when you're not hand painting on the mesh because it doesn't really conform to the surface. We end up with areas like this. See this kind of stuff. Um, and that's just, you know, it's the same thing in, in, if you were to look at poly painting in ZBrush, it also paints directly on the mesh, yeah. which is why, you know, that can also be an excellent tool for, for hand painting textures. I really prefer, uh, actually, that my favorite tool for hand painting textures is actually ZBrush. Yeah. So this is a huge issue in Painter. There are ways to get around, oh, sorry, this is a huge issue in Mari. There are ways to get around this in Mari. There are edge masking and all that, but that's kind of like a band-aid on a very bleeding wound. Yeah. Because it, it really doesn't, it, it really doesn't allow you to just paint creatively and experiment with all these kind of things. Just it's just two very fundamental approaches to painting, so... Yeah, exactly. So it's it would be super nice if we had that feature in <laughs> Painter as well, like proper projection workflow like you do have in Mari, where you paint on a glass pane. Uh, but... Um, Who knows, maybe that's coming. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's something that's coming. So big, big difference. Hand painting, good in Painter, yeah. not good in Mari. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing as well, which is one of the big differences, is how much control you have over each pixel. If you were to paint something here on a new layer in Mari, you can, let's just do, it's also apologies for the shittiest painting job in the <laughs> world. But also you can already see here now, so in this workstation we have a GTX 980 Ti. So 
fairly beefy uh, gaming graphics yeah. card, but it still takes a while because it needs to create a layer for all of your UDIMs. Yeah, it's it's quite heavy. So well, what you can do here, now we have a layer with just this, this stuff on, and uh, now you can do a bunch of stuff just on this layer. One of the cool things is you can add mask stacks to it. So a mask stack just means that it's kind of like a, like, a, like a layer mask in Photoshop, just that you can stack it on top of each other. So you have a layer here, now you can mask this out. And now you can just keep on going for an infinity over this. <laughs> so you can keep adding stuff on top of these kind of things. Actually, let's add a, you can add like a mask adjustment stack to these kind of things. You can add a gamma node just to the ones I painted. And you can just keep on going forever and ever and ever. So it's very granular control. Yes over like one specific set of pixels in like one channel. Yeah. And it's, it's, you have a lot of control. You have a lot of control. We were talking about before recording the video, like it's like if you had the same amount of resolution, if resolution was an issue, could you get to the same level of result in Painter and Mari? And yes, yes you can. You can, you definitely can get to the same result if, if you know you're painting on a 4K map. But one of the differences is in Mari, you can really control each pixel to a whole different level. You can yeah. create masks, which really you can just do so many different things with. In Painter, you definitely have control as well, but not as granular control, yeah, which so what you we might not need. Yeah, what we talked about was like, it's it takes a lot longer in Mari to get up to that, you know, super high res and everything's great. Uh, in Painter, it makes it really easy and quick to get up to a certain percentage really fast. Yeah. So you, you're at a baseline very, very quickly, whereas even getting up to the baseline in Mari still takes some time. But then getting from, you know, let's say the 70% to 100% in Painter, that's when you really have to start to work for it. And that's where it sort of like switches roles, where Mari starts to get easier and easier. Yeah, and one of these, and one of the reasons here as well is also due to resolution, because a lot of times it's, in, in Painter, you you if you are doing a character like this, you are capped by one tile, yeah. by one UDIM. So you just it's just a technological issue that you actually can't really get to 100. percent Like if you want to get this close to a character <laughs> yeah. in in Painter, like you you actually can't do it. So but you can get very quickly to a result where it works, what works here. Yeah. And one of the reasons is because of smart materials. This is where you have a bunch of smart materials. Like you can drag on basic human skin. And you know you have something which is, which is going to work in an okay manner. Uh, this is the human skin isn't amazing. They have some good ones by Texture XYZ by our friends over there, which are pretty decent. But um, for for most things, uh, you would probably be using more like concrete mm. or you know copper or whatever. And then you can see right away you get a really good result right away. Uh, if you set this to triplanar, we might get uh, uh, did nothing. <laughs> oh yeah, that was because the one below it. So you can do a bunch of different things here where you can get up to a quick result right away. Getting this kind of result this quickly in in Mari is actually impossible because yeah. you don't have this smart material system. And uh, you also don't have something like a Substance Designer in the back end to, to support it. You can get incredibly cool results right away just so from this. Just as a note, you know, this was something that we put a video out on uh, some months ago when we actually went and talked to the foundry. Mm. And these were some of the things that we talked about and, and you know, they had a preview of what's going to be installed for the next Mari, but or next update or whatever it is. Uh, but as it stands right now, this is definitely one of the major strengths of, of Painter as well. Yeah. Just how quick and easy it is to get up, you know, just throw on a smart material. But I would also say that that is... It's also one of the downsides of Painter because yes. it's, it means that, uh, I would say that it means that a lot of texture artists, in air quotation marks here, are getting lazy. And especially if they're just starting out, then you might ha you know get have the approach that, okay, just smart materials on and a few masks and I'm done. The problem with that is that everyone starts to have the same you know, rubber material, everyone has the same concrete material and there, you lack a lot of variation because you haven't had to make all the masks yet. That's one of the strengths of Mari. We will have to make all this yourself. Yeah, exactly. Well, we actually, I was actually just talking to somebody at a school now who had been told by uh, text writers at ILM who was reviewing their showreels that he could see which smart materials used <laughs> <laughs> as a basis. Like he can, a lot of these are very prominent, like 
uh, this one for instance like my shear like it's you just have uh, that didn't work properly <laughs> <laughs> but regardless you have a lot of these which oh that's because I haven't baked any mask for this oh, all right which is you should definitely do uh, but a lot of these they just look they just look like the smart material yeah because it's so easy to get a cool result from it actually what what you saw here where where the material didn't work it's supposed to look something like this would have tons of splotches that's because we haven't baked any masks you have to bake masks in in, in painter for it to really work uh, we're which, gonna cover that in future videos which is also a big difference between Mari and, and painter yeah yeah that's one of one of the ways that painter gets the results so quickly that mm. before you really start a project you you bake masks like ambient inclusion id curvature thickness and all these kind of things and the smart materials they rely on these material or yeah. these masks these baked masks and maps too that's why they're smart that's why so they're smart. like if you have a curvature mask and or a curvature map that you've baked you know if you apply a flaked paint material here you know on his his ears and stuff like tiny surfaces where you have directional changes you would start to see the paint flake off yeah and that's that's something that you don't even have to work for and you're already at like a really high level then what you could do afterwards is you can go in and manually just paint some more masks to really tweak it definitely recommend doing that uh, we are currently working really hard on uh, premium tutorial where we, we're going to be talking about this in more in depth where yeah. you, you we start off with some with some uh, basic materials like yeah. smart materials or just general materials and then you you paint on top of them to make them look good another big thing is that in painter you can paint across multiple channels which is really cool if we get rid of all this nasty stuff <laughs> if you make uh, just a new layer you can now you can go down here and you can see that you're now painting on a bunch of different materials at once so you can paint like a height map you can paint um, we can paint a color map and a spec map at the same time. So you can see that now we're painting, uh, we can add metallic. So there's a nice metallic feel to it. Adds a different specular value or roughness value. Yeah. This is where one of these where the Mari guys will be like, yeah, you can do this Mari as well. Yes, you can. A lot of linking and... It's yeah. a lot of linking. You gotta, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta set a layer to be to be shareable and you gotta share, uh, share channels across and it's just not very intuitive. And when in you regard. when you get to that level in Mari, where you know you have a super high resolution character painting across multiple channels uh, in multiple layers, uh, it just takes a long time to bake as well. Yeah, and it gets quite confusing. Yeah, but that's also actually what you just mentioned: they're baking uh, and in production. This is one one thing you're going to do often in production is uh, your UVs are changing. Yeah. Now. It, you can update your UVs here as well. It's fairly easy. You can just go and uh, uh, just import a new model and it will reproject the new things, but there aren't any settings for this. Yeah. You aren't actually baking the maps because everything here is is live. Each stroke you do is live, which means that if we're currently we're painting on 1K, we can easily upgrade this to 4K. No problem at all. But... Um, a lot of times you just have to bake down your textures and transfer them to a whole new UV set. Maybe the model looks different, but a lot of these these tricks you just really rely on. Yeah. So if I were to, was in a production, I couldn't use Painter, or at least VFX, I couldn't use Painter by itself. I would probably have to go into Mari yeah. a few times. Here what you there. could use Painter for is make some super cool tileables, yes. for example, and then you know, throw them into Mari, and then you vary everything with your masks in Mari. That's so, what a lot of people are doing, actually. They're they're making their base materials in Designer, they're putting them into Painter, and um, then uh, just to see how they, how they look, and then they, they paint masks in Mari, yeah. and they only use Mari for masks now. Yeah. That's actually a fairly popular way of doing it. Now, for characters, I would still do a full character, for film at least, I would still do the full character in Mari, because mm. you're going to finalize it there anyway and you just need the resolution yeah for film you're never talking about one item like that would be like <laughs> the most background of background characters it's like a rock in the corner somewhere. yeah exactly <laughs> like for um, for the films we worked on we might we might be talking between 60 and 100 items based on yeah. the resolution you're, you're talking about so there is just there is just no way you can use painter for characters for films today but for games you could yeah or if you you have a character which is not just a naked boy like this but it's but he has clothing on yeah you know like yeah uh, this is he has like an armor set here and he has like a bit of armor set here then you could easily split those into separate 
uh, separate maps yeah. or separate texture sets. And then you're fine. And like most most characters in games wear clothes anyway, yeah. so you could have something high resolution in Painter for the face, for the arms, for the clothing and stuff. So, you know, normal characters that aren't completely naked and one uh, coherent mesh, you could definitely get up to a to a higher level there in Painter. Yeah, and also in games, you you really just you don't don't want that resolution. You couldn't have sixty UDIMs. <laughs> like you you couldn't run in any game whatsoever. So you the, the visual quality there is just is just lower. Yeah. Just in because you you just aren't getting as close. Or if you are getting close, you just accept that it's not going to look completely for real. Yeah. While the requirement of film is it needs to fool the eye. It needs to look real. Yeah. While game, you know, game looks like a game because it's a game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they are they they do look impressive. Very nowadays. much so. You know, you get like Uncharted and stuff like that. Very very good stuff. Yeah, super high res stuff. Exactly. Another difference between the two is that in um, Painter you have iRay for rendering. Mm. iRay is amazing. While in um, Mari you have the motor render engine. Well, but that's really just not as well implemented. In Painter, iRay is really well implemented. It, it just... kind of felt like the motor render was put in and then forgotten. <laughs> yeah, I think that might have been exactly <laughs> what happened. Um, I tried to use it a few times, the motor render, and I, I never really got my head around it. In Painter, I just press, I don't know, F11 or F10 yeah, or something. Exactly. <laughs> and then I render. <laughs> so, it's, it's again, I think that just shows the different kinds of implementations where oftentimes in Painter, it's just an easy one button click solution of an implementation whereas in Mari you there's a lot of steps to get up to some yeah. level but then again you can get up to a high level except for when it comes to rendering yeah but also I also wouldn't care about that no. as to to use it as of as a what software you should use yeah it's not it? a selling point for either of these software no exactly because right now it's it's a texturing software it's not like Maya or Blender or whatever which is like a you can start and end your thing there. No. This is is an intermediary software. First, you need assets built in a, in a regular 3D, 3D software, and then you're most likely going to export your maps out. Very, very rarely would you actually use Painter as the final thing, unless maybe for a portfolio piece or something. So what we have done is we've actually used Painter to render final product shots for Flip Normals. That's really cool, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we made, so we have the Flip Normals lighting scene, and from that we made the Flip Normals HDRIs, which is just like a, you know, it's like a base line of the lighting scenes where you don't have as much control, but yeah. you just throw them on there. So we just have some textured assets in Painter, and we wanted to see what it would look like if we just used iRay and HDRIs, and it actually ended up being so quick and easy that we just ended up rendering yeah, within exactly. substance. Well, that's uh, that's kind of a secondary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's totally secondary. There's like I didn't, we didn't even paint in there. So no, yeah, exactly. we just had textures on there. Yeah, we use Painter <laughs> as a render engine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Point is just I wouldn't uh, no. I, I wouldn't use that as a determining factor. I would be more where can you get the quickest maps out of it? Yeah, yeah. You know what it's designed for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we should talk about. Um, oh yes, um, I, we have to say which one is the best. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, before we do that, <laughs> one cool thing is if you want quick maps, like uh, let's just delete these kind of things. Uh, if you want like a quick grunge map, grunge map is something you do all the time. For every single character or every single asset you do, you need grunge maps, whatever maps you do. You can very easily get this in Painter. There are just so many which ships with them, which is just, they're all just made in designer as far as I know. So it's not just grunge, but it's like, it's like anything. You can very quickly just change the result of it. You can duplicate it. You can add something new. Mm. This is, it sounds like a small thing, but one of the, Whenever you're texturing, you end up using like two or three grunge maps for the entire project. The fact that you can just pick and choose all... Super funky. <laughs> you can just choose all these is honestly for me one of the things which speeds up my texturing so much. Yeah. Just because if, if what you do is spend all the time on grunge maps and you have unlimited grunge maps, <laughs> this is going to speed up your texturing. Well, if you go into Mari, you would have a bunch of procedurals. You're talking about like color or like clouds. You have a lot of cool ones here. And if you have the extension pack, which you definitely need to have in Mari, then uh, you have a bunch more. But it's, it's still like basic turbulence. It's still very basic things. Yeah, the generators and stuff that they have in Substance are very powerful. Really, really Especially powerful. the ones from Designer. They're 
so cool. Yeah. And you can use them to mask stuff out as well. Like if you want to mask this out, you can easily do that and have a generator here and and mask this out with with these kind of things as well. And none of this, this is not really going to work because there are no cavity masks. Or anything. <laughs> but uh, super cool stuff. Yeah. So yeah, we can we can talk more in depth if there is anything you guys request. But really, just to round it off, is they solve different issues. Yeah. Mari is the tool you need if you need really insane textures or anything more than a single item yeah. <laughs> for characters. Painter is the tool you want to use if if you want to get up to a certain to like an, a decent result really really quickly where you know you can take it further. So for me it's not so much which tool is the best, it's more what's the best for the job. Yeah. And for characters, you know, for especially for VFX and cinematic and stuff like that. Mari is hands down the best tool. Yeah, it's just it's just way more powerful. If you're doing hard surface assets, then Painter is definitely going to be your go-to, yeah. just because of all the smart materials, the ease of use. Uh, you know the way you bake all your your cavity maps, curvature maps, and stuff. You can get a really really high quality result in Painter there, which is going to be a lot harder in Mari. Um, so it really depends on the job you're you're doing. So if you're a student now and you're watching this and you're like so. So, Mr. Henning and Morton, what uh, what software should I learn? You should learn both. Yeah. <laughs> you really you you really should because it's like what's better, a hammer or a screwdriver? Well, I mean, learn both. Mm. <laughs> and then also, if you uh, if you're a bit more hardcore, I learn uh, designer as well. Designer is is amazing. That's a whole different story. Yeah, that's just basically how do you if if painter is how do you paint this kind of stuff? Designer is how do you make these materials? That's one of the most powerful software out there, out there today in terms of texturing. Yeah. I guess as a, a final note I just thought of is also price. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Painter, I think it's like a hundred, $200 I or something. I actually don't know. So I think, I think it's something. Anyway, it's way cheaper than, than Mari. So that's also one thing you have to consider is the cost of those things. Oh, and also another thing in regards to that, um, Painter is being actively updated. Now, uh, Mari is also being actively updated, and I'm sure we have some Mari developers listening on this as well. <laughs> but not to the same extent. I used the same version of of Mari for my entire career in 2. painting. 2.6? Yeah, I started in <laughs> 2.5, and I ended in 2.6 V64 or something like that. Yeah, like that we, was when we quit, 4 was out. Yeah, exactly. But no one used 4. Yeah, exactly. Really. And we're using version 4 here, but the differences really aren't that big. They have like, oh, check it out. It's it's floating. Yeah, cool. And now it disappears again. That's cool. And there are some differences. There are some small differences. There's a node graph. Pretty big thing. But I day to day, I literally don't notice the difference between yeah. this version and what I used 4 years ago, 5 years ago. In Painter, I, I notice a difference from each quarterly version mm. if you use the spring edition versus the summer edition like huge differences but that could also be down to just the sheer amount of features that already exist in mari could be. and you know just that being maybe more of a mature texturing software yeah so it's like yeah there are there are a lot of differences and they both have their strengths and weaknesses so there, there is no final winner in no. in this battle it <laughs> seems like mari is taking inspiration from painter to become more like painter and yeah. painter is taking inspiration of mari to become more <laughs> like like mari so now the question is which one can become the other of the fastest <laughs> yeah, who's going to get there first <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting to follow yeah this the game here changes if um, mari if painter gets proper udem support yeah. then the balance here changes dramatically. The balance of the force. The balance of the force. So, uh, <laughs> if you guys are listening from a foundry, uh, you know, no, yeah. so from not from foundry, from algorithmic, then you, you know, you want to <laughs> really get that up. But yeah, I think I think that just about covers most of the things sort of we wanted to highlight here. Um, I'm sure we've missed a bunch of different things. Definitely. Very, and I'm gonna predict there's gonna be a bunch of comments with very specific features. <laughs> that were like this makes this software the best because you can rotate this light in this way or something. Yeah. Uh, make sure to leave those. We'd be interested in reading it. Just <laughs> like because we definitely missed a lot of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I think this is gonna be our final verdict on this, at least for now. Yeah. So we might return to this once uh, both of these get more updates. But yeah, if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure to turn on notifications because YouTube is uh, is not doing that for you. It's being a little sneaky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.